So, what happens if the government doesn't have enough money to repay back the coupon payments or the bond principles? What should an investor do in such a situation? On today's video, I'm looking at the final risk to investing in your government bonds, and this is default risk. If you've already subscribed to my channel, a million thank yous to you for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe by clicking the subscribe button. It's down here. Click subscribe and don't forget to smash the bell icon so that every time I release a video, you receive an instant reminder. Now, let's get started. Hello there entrepreneurs and welcome to another episode of the Ndalama Insights Business Show with Mukonki Mukonkela where we turn your challenges into actionable insights. Today I'm looking at default risk. What happens if the government is, an, is unable to pay their obligations on the bond? So default risk refers to the inability of the issuer to make payments on their government bonds and these payments are coupon payments or the principal amount upon maturity so when the government who's the issuer of the government bonds is unable to pay their obligations with regards to coupon payments or the principal amount then they are exposed to what is referred to as a, a default risk and investors have to be aware of this default risk credit rating agencies such as Moody's, Standard & Poor, or Finch, normally allocate a credit rating to a creditor. And this also includes issuers of uh, government bonds as well. So these rating agencies also allocate a rating to governments, those that issue government bonds. And many governments across the world actually issue government bonds. So when you go to a credit rating agency's website, such as Moody's, you will be able to find a rating for your country in terms of what um, you know how they've assessed the credit risk or default risk of your country there are so many factors that they consider they look at the economic performance of the country the political stability the liquidity their current debt you know uh, amount that the country is holding and so many other factors so they look at these factors in order to allocate a credit rating to a country. And credit rating agencies have got different ways in which they actually, you know, allocate a credit rating or they use different, um, uh, you know, styles of, of credit rating. One style that they use is using the alphabet. So they use the letters on the alphabet to allocate a credit rating. For Moody's or Standards and Poor, they use the, a, A or triple A's all the way up to D's. So if your country is allocated a triple A, it means that the credit rating for that country is pretty good. If you are allocated uh, just two A's, it means it's okay. And if you are allocated a B, it means your credit rating is medium risk. If you are allocated a D, it means your credit rating is junk and, and it's quite poor. And it becomes more important for euro bond holders these are investors that are you know lend to the government in a different currency other than the zambian kwacha and so you need to be aware of your country's uh, credit rating because this uh, affects your your cost of borrowing especially for euro bond holders those investors whose uh, investments in the bonds are not in a, in a, in a zambian kwacha or, or the local currency and they are normally foreign investors so if you are a euro bond holder it is extremely important for you to look at the credit rating of the country in fact many euro bond holders before they even invest in, in a government they always look at the credit rating of that government and it informs them when making a bid and these are actually the investors who normally compete when when it when it comes to the competitive and uncompetitive bidding we find that euro bond holders invest huge amounts of money into the government and therefore are part of their competitive bidding process 
And when they look at the credit rating, it affects how much they can offer the government. In fact, it increases the cost of borrowing if a government's credit rating is very poor or it's a junk. And therefore, the euro bond holders normally consider the credit rating or default risk of a country when they are bidding for, for government bonds. To find Zambia's credit rating, you just need to go to any credit rating agency's website, such as Moody's, and you'll be able to find Zambia's current credit rating. Now, has it ever happened that the government has defaulted on their obligations on bonds? Yes, in fact, on the 14th of October 2020, Zambia made history when it defaulted on its uh, 2024 euro bond by failing to pay the coupon payment on that bond. Zambia a few years ago also was unable to pay the coupon payments as well as principals on their government bonds when they were highly indebted. So it has happened in the past. What normally happens when a government defaults on its uh, obligations on, on payments on the bond coupons as well as principals is that they will sit down with their investors and negotiate a payment plan. Let me let me separate these two investors between local and foreign investors who are normally referred to as euro bonds. Okay, so currently as I'm speaking, Zambia managed to agree a restructuring plan with its euro bond holders. Okay, Zambia is estimated to be owing at least 17 billion US dollars to its euro bond holders. And recently, with China coming on board, Zambia was able to agree a restructuring plan on its uh, euro bonds, meaning that the investors have now agreed to stretch their payment plans, making it uh, you know, easier for the government of Zambia to actually repay back the principles and coupons on these bonds. So it's become, it's become more flexible for the government of Zambia to actually handle these euro bond holders in terms of their, their, their obligations on the, on the bond. Another thing the government is trying to achieve is to have their debts cancelled. Now this is uh, an interesting angle that um, I'm keen to see where it's going to take us. Will the foreign investors actually cancel their debts? Now, when you, are, when you are talking about euro bond holders, you actually need to know that these are individuals, wealthy individuals abroad, who are investing their money into the Zambian uh, country or into the, with the Zambian government for, the Zambia's, uh, for Zambia's uh, development. Now, it's not free money. They are using their savings to earn a return from Zambia. Okay. So as to whether these investors are going to agree to cancel their debt is something that um, you know we are all looking out to see how it's going to turn out. So with euro bond holders, government has restructured the debt. With local bond holders, the risk is much lower than the euro bond holders. And uh, what normally happens with uh, if the government is about to default on the local bondholders is that they will again negotiate with the local investors and agree a restructuring plan, possibly roll over their uh, payments to future periods. So they would agree to say we'll roll over your coupon payments as well as your uh, your <laughs> as well as your principal amounts to a future period. So they will agree with their local bondholders to agree to roll over the payments on the coupon as well as the principal amounts. Okay. Now, many people think that when the government doesn't have enough resources, they can simply you know, ask Bank of Zambia or the central bank to print more quatchers so that they are able to meet their debt obligations. However, it's important to note that it is not that easy to, for a government to make a decision to print money because printing money actually results in inflation, a huge increase in inflation resulting in the prices for goods and services going up and as a result having an adverse effect on the government's citizenry and this is the last thing the government wants to achieve. And... Um, you know, Zimbabwe is a good example of um, how printing money affects the country. Zimbabwe's inflation flew off the roof 
when they decided to take the route of printing money to pay for their debt obligations as well as to pay for their for their government projects and um, this is a decision that resulted in Zimbabwe's currency you know losing its value actually it's been told that for a Zimbabwean in the 2006s for 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 you to buy a loaf of bread in Zimbabwe you had to carry a wheelbarrow of uh, zim dollars to just go and buy one loaf of bread and so printing money to meet debt obligations is the last option the government actually looks at many people think it's as easy as come on let's just print the quarters no it is not as easy as it seems so what happens when you know about you know all these risks that i've been talking about in this video as well as my previous two videos you see when you when you are looking at um assessing an investment don't just look at the good aspects the returns that you're going to make on your investment you also need to be aware of the risks that you're going to face it's more like when you are taking medication you know you are going to feel better after drinking panadol right but you also need to be aware of the effects panadol is going to have on your body so that you are ready for those okay and when it comes to investing it doesn't matter whether it's a government bond it's in property it's on the stock market you need to be aware of the benefits as well as you know the advantages or the disadvantages of investing or taking a certain investment um, vehicle and so when i've when looking at these three risks it's important for you to understand that you are now enlightened now how do you take them into account when you're actually doing your investment in the government bond so we spoke about interest rate risk we spoke about uh, default risk we, we spoke about inflation risk when you are making an investment in government bonds Consider these risks. Are they risks that you are able to afford to take? Or how can you minimize your exposure to these risks? Okay, uh, they are, this is your time now to do your research. You could consider investing in bonds of shorter term durations to reduce your exposure to inflation as well as interest rate risk. You could consider staggering your investments as such that you are investing just in two year bonds every once in a while. So you could say, this month I'm investing 50,000 kwacha in a two-year bond. After two months, you could invest in another two-year bond with another 50,000 kwacha and so on. Always look at diversifying your investment. It's not a must that you should just invest in the bond. You could look at other investment vehicles. The stock market, yeah, <laughs> that is a bit tricky. But hey, well, we are going to look at other you know, stock markets as well, because we want to get the best return on our investment, right? So the stock market, whether in Zambia or abroad, is a good option for you to look at. You could look at investing in property. I've done videos on that, and um, there are other YouTubers that are actually looking specifically at property investment. Take a look at those as well. And so this is how you take into account your exposure to, you know, risks, of investing in government bonds well this is all I had to share if you liked today's video don't forget to give it a like button if you enjoy watching my videos you've been here a number of times don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button it is up here click subscribe and uh, don't forget to smash the bell icon so that you can be reminded next time I release a video thank you so much for watching and see you next time